A hundred percent. The universe rewards people that take a jump, take a leap of faith. I really, really believe that. That has proven itself to be true over and over in my life. And uh, yeah, you know, getting sober was the scariest thing I've ever done by far, just because biologically, you know, your addiction does not want you to do that. That's just a matter of like brain chemistry and stuff. And so it'll put terror in you like you've never felt before. And uh, I just went for it. And and that's kind of been a theme of this project is like, man, this is scary. I don't know. I'm putting myself out there. This is scary. I don't know if this is going to work out. And sometimes you got to say, what the fuck? And you just do it and it, it pays off. <laughs> Today on the show, we are joined with Nate Garrett of Spirit Adrift. They have just released a brand new album titled Ghost at the Gallows. And around talking about the music, Nate and I just have a deep introspective chat about life, the very hard but very rewarding path of being an artist. And he leaves us with some incredible advice for anybody trying to step foot into the music industry. So let's get into it. Hope you enjoy this. Hey. Hey, Nate. How you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you, brother? Oh, good, good. Really nice to meet you, man. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, listening to all the new singles this morning, the three that you put out uh, at Ghost at the Gallows. And uh, I'm pretty new to Spirit Adrift. And uh, I just want to say one thing I really appreciate about uh, your band is it kind of just goes back to like the roots of traditional metal. And I feel like these times were in such like a uh, timeline of everybody melding subgenres and everything and it just has like uh just that old school feel but with modern production and everything and uh, i just kind of want to know a little bit about like your philosophy and getting this music out of you like in that style fair man well thank you very much that's a that's a really rad assessment of it and i i'm flattered by that i love it um i you know our our label sent us a thing the other day i think it was rolling stone germany wrote it and it said something about like uh talking about our new album and, and mentioned kind of what you said that uh when heavy metal was first kind of forming and defining itself as a genre there weren't really distinct lines between you know classic metal first wave stuff um you know doom metal thrash metal new wave of british heavy metal there there weren't these like super strict dividing lines between all those little subgenres. it was just metal uh and that's all the stuff that i got into when i first got into metal um you know i grew up in a, a very small town in oklahoma and music has been a part of my life like for as long literally as long as i can remember and i remember hearing you know growing up in the south i heard credence and leonard skinner uh i listened to fm rock radio because there wasn't the internet so I would hear uh, everything from Boston and Blue Oyster Cult to like the early Aussie stuff, maybe sometimes a Metallica song here and there, Tom Petty, Bob Seger. So that all kind of started to shape my musical DNA. Uh, but then I heard Black Sabbath and Jimi Hendrix, and that that was it. That's when I was like, I'm playing guitar, I'm playing in a band. Uh, and Black Sabbath led to that. That was my entry into metal. So I got into like, Metallica and Slayer, that first wave of thrash metal, retroactively got into the new wave of British heavy metal, found out about Doom, found out about Sludge, Death Metal, uh, and I loved it all equally. Um, and it, yeah, I think, you know, when I started Spirit Adrift, uh, the only intention was like making music that I dug. That's it. I It was a solo project. I didn't even know if I was going to make a record. I didn't know if it would ever be a band. I wasn't even like thinking about that. I just wanted to make music that reflected what I was going through at the time. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And, you know, I, I think I have very thoroughly defined musical DNA and through that lens spirit of drift is just a means of like processing whatever I'm dealing with in my life at the time and turning the challenges of life into something cool that people can enjoy that can hopefully maybe help other people the way that black Sabbath helped me through my whole life. You know? Yeah. I love how or hearing and even reading like how much like 
spirit of drift is just kind of like your natural release because uh i also like kind of looked into your history too and you've been part of so many different bands and stuff and i know the hackiest question uh journalists can ask is oh what what's the meaning of your band or name and everything but spirit of drift just kind of seems like how it started um like just some type of symbolism even within the name of you kind of doing uh your own thing and am i correct on that yeah definitely dude it like every other aspect of the band is literally just like what's the most accurate and honest thing that i can make or say that's like something that i need to get out and you know it's funny that i had some like arbitrary rules when i was finding the name basically like i've been in some bands with really long names that are kind of <laughs> like a mouthful and not that catchy sounding so i was like okay i want it to be two words maximum hopefully less than like five syllables you know and i was just reading books looking at movies like going th through my record collection and you know wino is one of my heroes he was in the obsessed saint vitus hidden hand million bands shrine builder but he was in a band called spirit caravan that's really underrated they have an ep called dream wheel that's like one of my favorite hard rock things ever made so i've pulled that out i was like okay spirit's a cool word and every other band now has spirit in the name but at the time they didn't like spirit <laughs> caravan was really the only one i was aware of uh and and then there's spirit from the 70s that uh uh, led zeppelin stole her song or whatever but that was it man so i'm like okay spirit's a cool word and then i was looking and looking uh and i was looking through my yob records and they have a song called the drift in the ocean which is one of my favorite songs mm. and i was like that's pretty cool spirit adrift like and it, yeah it totally described the way i was feeling at the time i had just gotten sober after 15 years of just like total insanity and uh, self-abuse you know chaos mm. uh so i was kind of like it felt like being born into like a totally new reality that i was unfamiliar with you know wow uh, yeah that that's what it felt like i felt like a spirit adrift and fortunately like the name still manages to kind of fit with uh, the like old school classic heavy metal aesthetic you know the sound of the band sort of naturally evolved over the years and uh the name still fits i think yeah that's so cool even like uh to hear you kind of like talk about where you got it from it's more layers onto your influences too and it kind of just seems like uh you just diving into or just embracing um your own project is just almost like a rebirth and reset in your music life and it's something uh, I don't make music, but in other ways in my life, I feel like I kind of did the same thing. And some, sometimes when you take that leap, it's uh, it's scary. You're kind of going into the unknown. But I find the more you chip away at it, magic starts happening and stuff like that. And a hundred percent. The universe rewards people that take a jump, take a leap of faith. I really, really believe that that has proven itself to be true over and over in my life. And um uh, yeah, you know, getting sober was the scariest thing I've ever done by far, just because biologically, you know, your addiction does not want you to do that. That's just a matter of like brain chemistry and stuff. And so it'll put terror in you like you've never felt before. And uh, I just went for it. And and that's kind of been a theme of this project is like, man, this is scary. I don't know. I'm putting myself out there. This is scary. I don't know if this is going to work out. And sometimes you got to say what the fuck and you just do it and it it pays off that and that's you know the people that aren't willing to do that uh those are the people that like don't don't do anything crazy and and reward like it, it's tempting and it's a lot safer just to be like a mechanized worker bee you know and I don't want to insult anybody that's doing that because I that's easier. Sometimes I wish I had that kind of life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've just found, man, that if if you're scared shitless and there's something you don't know how you're going to do it or what the future is going to hold if you go down that path, like every time I've done it, there's been some kind of payoff for sure. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for people to hear that too. Even uh, especially these segments I do, it's not just music. There's a, 
I talk to filmmakers and stuff like that. And I notice like a lot of different creatives gravitate to listening to these two and almost in a way that they're looking for advice or some sort of thing. And I find there's encouragement. A lot of, yeah. I find yeah. like there's a lot of people who get to those crossroads where it's time to make a leap and they're just, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like they tighten up and it's something I uh, also dealt with too, but uh I just got to say, and almost like what you said too, uh, once you go for it, uh, magic happens and you kind of, uh, I don't know, see things in a different perspective than like it almost deletes the anxiety of taking that leap. Yeah, man. And I just got to thinking, you know, I'm just based off of what you said, I, I am a sucker for like motivational, just constant motivational, like ear candy and eye candy, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we, my wife and I were watching Liar Liar last night and I'm watching Jim Carrey just like act, act such a fool in that movie. And then knowing what he's turned into, he's like a freaking spiritual guru nowadays. Uh, but he said something that really stuck with me. Uh, he was telling a story about his father and, you know, his father spent his whole life. I forget what he did, but he was a career guy for this same company for a really long time and he got laid off. Um, and he had dedicated so much time and so much energy to this job. And the lesson that Jim Carrey took away from that was you might as well do what you want in life because you can fail at what you don't want. Mm -hmm. And man, that like, if you're going to fail, which is inevitably going to happen to everyone, you might as well like pursue the path that you really, really like your wildest dream. Just pursue that because you can you can like take the quote unquote safe path and fail at that. So mm -hmm. yeah, might as well, well do what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so facts too. And uh I find like sometimes people they know what they want to do and for whatever reason, and even I felt this way when I was younger, um, just other people's opinions and that feeling of, oh, what would they think of me if I don't do well or follow this crazy dream i feel like that stifles a lot of people too but 100 uh, percent. Yeah, yeah once you fear once you and, and self-doubt and, and all of that man and uh yeah i get that and sometimes it, you know i was a typical case of like i went to college and stuff i didn't want to and i didn't have like any idea what i wanted to do and then I, I dropped out to play music again and I didn't have any idea like how any of it worked. You know, I grew up in a small town and didn't have any friends or family members in the music industry in any way, shape or form. So it was all literally just trial and error and failing over and over and over and over for 15 years, you know, mm -hmm. until I started Spirit Adrift. And that was kind of the first taste of, uh, of success. And so there's no you know, it's easy to compare yourself to others. Like I, I think about the fact that uh, James Hetfield was like 20 years old when they did Master of Puppets or yeah, Ride the Lightning. That's insane to me. Every time I, I want to die, think of that, I'm like, what the I, fuck? I <laughs> want to die when I think about that. But then I think about like uh, somebody like Charles Bukowski who didn't was writing through his whole life in the trash, his entire life writing books and didn't ever get published really until he was like in his 50s. So it, like comparing yourself where you're at on your path to someone else, it's just completely useless. It, it like does, it does damage to your self-confidence and your psyche. Um, so I, yeah, whatever, if you can, if you're lucky enough to figure out what you truly believe is your purpose on earth, do it, man, do it. Like even if you're chipping away baby steps, like whatever, cause it's, man, that's the best that life gets is when you feel like you're, in alignment with the path that you're supposed to be on. Yeah. Very well said, Nate too. And it's, it's interesting to kind of, in my experience, uh, some things that could be looked at failures in the long run, they're not failures at all. Cause it's just like, I needed to learn that lesson at that time. And then it's whether you never do it again, or you just have like an eye opening experience of, Oh, this is the way like, I, I'm sure there's many of that, like when anybody jumps into the music industry, because all they see and hear is like people on the radio, maybe a music video. And they're like, I want to do that. 
and then they're diving into it and it's a whole nother universe like behind the curtain like the wizard of oz type shit going on but a hundred percent man and and there's like there's different ways that you can approach this music thing and one of the things that happens that i always thought was kind of like an overblown sort of rumor deal but there are like industry created bands and artists Mm -hmm. um and i just recently found out some creepy shit like japan has an idol industry that's like a conveyor belt like a assembly line of like idols it's ruthless too dude it is so creepy but yeah people over here in the states and in north america have adopted elements of that and even like it would surprise people but even in like heavy music that's going on um maybe not as creepy as what's going on in places like japan but Mm -hmm. there is a thing that happens where managers and agents and labels and people like create a project that they know is going to be this amount of successful uh so that's one way of doing it and i don't think that that is the right way of doing it. i think it rarely works out in the long term and i think it creates a lot of misery for the people involved and the way i did it is completely opposite there was like with spirit adrift there was zero thought put into oh i'm gonna write a song like this and record a record like this so that this label will put it out and this agent will pick us up and we can tour with this band and that band um and there's nothing wrong with that a lot Mm -hmm. of bands do that and still manage to make cool art and cool music uh but the way i did it was completely organic and natural with no intentions whatsoever other than getting music out of myself that I felt I had to. And I like having done it this way. It's a lot more challenging at times and it's a grind and it'll probably be a grind for as long as I'm doing it. But I think there's a lot more, I know there's a lot more honesty and sincerity to it. And I think that it is better in the long term to do it this way. Hell yeah, I'm sure there's just that total sense of pride too. And even you can probably sleep soundly at night, you know, knowing that you're not changing your morals to like yeah. to get on this stage or this tour or yeah, play and something see, I, you don't want to play. Like I get pulled into that though. I do get pulled into that because I'm such a driven person. I'm like, yeah, I want to play with Metallica and Iron Maiden. Now I'm like, hell yeah. But um, I heard another quote the other day about like people on the spiritual path or whatever you want to call it. I don't know if that's me, but they said, you know, we have a narrow, too narrow a definition of respectability. And I like that a lot, man. Like I compared to, to a lot of people behind the scenes in this more industry oriented part of all this, it's like, I, I definitely have like missed out on stuff because I, have too narrow a definition of respectability for myself and for others and for the project. And it's always going to be, I I'm never going to like, there's certain shit I will just never do. I'm never going to try to like stab people in the back to get on tours or kiss this person's ass or whatever. So yeah, there is a sense of pride about it. Like knowing when I'm, if I make it to old age, I won't have to look back and be like, I can't believe I, I prostituted myself to, to do something that was like fleeting and material, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. Especially if it's just like a short term, like thing where you got success out of it, maybe for like a year and then yeah, boom, it's over type of thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you're absolutely killing it too. And one thing um, I do respect about your music too, is also like lyrically and like um, just thematically, it is coming from a really real place. And uh, a lot of, um, stuff that i've read on the latest project is like it's kind of uh a way of processing like uh grieving in a way as well too and um i think that's amazing i talk to like a lot of comedians on here too and they do it in a certain way and i think there's just something beautiful with an artist like i feel like they their superpower is to take something maybe that's tragic to them but then being able to flip it on its head 
make either like a beautiful song or a joke with a crazy punchline. It's uh-huh. almost like just dominating that pain to like the next level of just like the biggest fuck you. Okay. I'm going to make art out of, the, out of this. Maybe I'll make some money off of it. Like, you know, it's yeah. just like, it's, it's so, I think that's so cool. Like, yeah, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I, I, you're talking about comedians. I think it was Stan Hope that had a closing bit years ago about like his mom having to pull the plug on his mom or something and he may he managed to make it like you have no choice but to laugh at it it was like such a beautiful twists and turns and like emotional peaks and valleys through this whole bit and then you're just like laughing and crying you know and yeah there's something awesome about that man like the indomitable human spirit and uh that's Mm -hmm. a key that's a key uh aspect of spirit adrift for sure i mean that's how it started and that's that's what it's been for me since the beginning is a a place to put whatever i'm going through whether it's hard or whether it's great or whatever and makes create something from that uh Mm -hmm. so that other people you know the the creation process helps me I love it. It makes me feel better. Playing guitar makes me feel better. Writing songs, creating something, demoing the songs. Every part of the process is pleasant for me. And and that's like a, that's an understatement. Pleasant is like a total understatement. It's like fulfilling in so many ways. It's so joyful and uh, makes me feel like I have a purpose because sometimes when I'm not doing it, I don't feel like I have a purpose. You know, I Mm. think that's a very common thing people struggle with, especially nowadays. And yeah, to be able to put everything I'm going through into that process. And on the other side of it, you have this new thing that didn't exist before. And now you put this new thing out where people that you've never met can hear it and feel what you're feeling and, and feel like they're not alone. Uh, that's what music's always done for me sitting there reading Metallica lyrics, fade to black, you know, (laughs) reading geezer Butler's lyrics on the early black Sabbath stuff. Uh, A lot of that stuff is just escapism. That's cool too. I have songs like that too. It's all, um, it's all about getting through life and uh, hopefully like leaving the world better, better than how you found it. Oh, that's beautifully said, man. And uh, even kind of just reading like, um, up on like this latest album too uh specifically uh i read that even in mind of the grieving like uh you kind of had trevor from black dahlia murder riley from power trip um just in your thoughts and those are two guys actually i've had a personal moment with on my media journey of just kindness that i'll never forget but i didn't know them personally but just these two moments of just like uh almost just love and encouragement from them. And I just kind of want to know, like, uh, um, as one of their peers, like, how how did they mean to you? Oh, man, I, I think that's rad that you would consider me one of their peers. I, I don't know. They might, too, but that's, like, weird for me would. to accept. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, no, nah, man, you said it. They were just kind people. And I try to get along with everybody. And I, I try to not have a problem with anybody unless they, you know, give me like a really good reason. And even then, I like life's easier without enemies. But that being said, like I would be lying if I said I respected everybody because I really like a lot of people. It just, yeah, I don't know. Again, like I have a pretty narrow definition of respectability. Um, but I, those are two guys that I have like the utmost love and respect for in every every way dude as as people as musicians as guys that tour it's like i think touring musicians have a bond that's similar to people in the military or something like that and i don't want to like lessen what those people do because it's way gnarlier than what we're doing but i've actually had guys with military experience who tour saying yeah it's there are similarities for sure (laughs) um so yeah there's a bond there um, uh, that's just powerful, man. Cause you, you can bond on so many levels. You bond as creative types, you bond as 
people who struggle with uh, some of the challenges that creative types have mental and emotional challenges. And, and you bond with the challenges that you've overcome with the whole touring thing. And I felt all that uh, for both of those guys. And I still do, you know, I, I, I don't have any interest in like um, romanticizing dudes that are gone or anything like that. I don't care. There's been plenty of people that died that I didn't really care for. And I would tell you that. And mm -hmm. those were like two of the best guys I've ever met, man. And uh, yeah, two, two of like many people that uh, didn't make it through the past few years. Uh, I, I lost like a lot of, a lot of friends, um, a lot of guys that I was honestly closer with than those two guys. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I, Riley Gale is one of the best people I've ever met. And I, it would be very difficult to find anybody that would say otherwise. And Trevor, same thing, man. I, I've never heard anybody say anything bad about either one of them. And uh, yeah, I miss them. Yeah. Well said. And uh, yeah, she had, like you said, mentioned Trevor, total sweetheart. It's like my first year of doing media. Uh, I was doing it for like a website and they're like, oh, Sean, you like metal? Go talk to these guys. And it's like everybody I've been a fan of, they just didn't have a metal guy, but I was like totally unqualified. <laughs> but I remember just Trevor being like so nice. And uh, I have an old photo and uh, the caption was, uh, they say uh, you shouldn't meet your heroes, but I talked to Trevor and uh, it makes me want to meet all my heroes. Cause yeah, he just that's how you sweet feel he was. good. Just mm -hmm. a, a, being around him just made you feel good. I Like every single time I was around him, I felt better than I did before I was, you know, as soon as I saw him, I instantly felt better. Yeah. He's a great dude. Just one of those vibes. And uh yeah. I got to mention uh, Ghost at the Gallows is coming out August 18th and around this release. Are you going to, are you planning on touring or anything like that? We're doing a fest in Anaheim, uh, September 17th, I'm going to say, and mm -hmm. checking another one of my absolute favorite bands off the list of bands that we played with. It's uh, Testament headlining. I love Testament. They're one of the first bands I saw when I got sober and uh, they were playing oh, cool. like, almost all of the first two records and when they played oh. into the pit i like yeah. <laughs> i was in it. i was in in the pit uh so yeah, blackout cool. <laughs> that would happen Dude, so <laughs> so cool to play with them finally uh also fear factory is playing like my two favorite fear factory records that were on constant rotation when i was a kid um uh, so i'm psyched on that that's in anaheim i think at the house of blues that'll sort of be like that our ghost of the gallows album release uh, oh beautiful yeah and we're we're actually um it looks like we're probably taking a little bit of time off i had a pretty severe back injury a couple months ago uh so i'm i'm working on getting that corrected hopefully through non-surgical means uh that's going pretty well so yeah that's i just want to make hear, sure yeah. like when it comes time to hit it that we're all ready and, and good to go we're talking to a few bands about different stuff. We've been talking to um, Green Lung from the UK. I love that man. We're probably going to try to hit Europe. And I would like to get them over to the States too. So I'll probably try and do whatever we can do to help facilitate that. But um, yeah, like High on Fire's putting out a new record next year. We played with them. We love them. They're, they're buds. Uh, so I'd like to make that happen as well. But we'll see, man. I'll just keep writing music and see what happens yeah awesome and yeah definitely take care of your health first too it's uh, uh i know people are enjoying spirit of drift so when you're ready <laughs> we'll come see you i'll definitely uh if you ever come to the toronto area i'll be love toronto well. love yeah, toronto awesome. man hell yeah cool cool and uh i guess like as a, as a last question since um so many different creatives kind of gravitate to these segments like like i mentioned uh do you have any like general advice for somebody who's might be thinking of taking their next step into the music industry. If they're just somebody who almost like yourself uh, has all has this passion and everything of like stuff inside of them that they want to get out, but just don't know how to take that first step. Yeah. Believe it or not, the most important thing is the music. Despite all the trappings of the industry and all the strings that can be pulled to manipulate other elements of all this, 
the most important thing is the music and every creative type that I've ever looked up to, whether it's Clint Eastwood, John Carpenter, Rick Rubin, Jeff Hanneman from Slayer, like unanimously, what all these guys figure out eventually is that you have to please yourself with your art, period. You can't start thinking about, oh, is this demographic going to like this? Is this other person going to like this? Is this? No, man, you are passionate about what you're doing. You have good taste. Make what fills your heart and, and makes you feel good. Uh, because if you start thinking about making stuff for anybody else, it can get very confusing very fast. So always just stay true to yourself and uh, try not to make stupid decisions outside of that. And if it's not a fuck yes, it's a no. Mm, nice, nice. Well, thank you for your time today, Nate. I, and I also want to say before I let you go, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Um, Me too. I always, I always love when I write like a bunch of questions down and we don't even get to those questions. We just like, <laughs> ended up just talking about the um, deeper stuff than I expected. And uh, yeah, it's I, different, man, because I'm in the press cycle. So I get like the same questions over and over. I think this is way cooler, honestly. Oh, amazing. That makes me so happy to hear. And hopefully like on your next project or whatever, we can do this again because I absolutely uh, just love talking to you today, man. I'd love to, man. Anytime. Thanks again to Nate for a wonderful talk. Like we mentioned in the intro, Ghost at the Gallows is out now and definitely recommend checking it out and definitely check out Spirit Adrift when they eventually tour around your town. And before I go, I can't leave without thanking all you legends on the Patreon page. Support me and the show, cover my web fees, all that fun shit. But first up, biggest thanks to Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel. Definitely check that out if you're into technology, how things work, and most importantly, how to fix them. Another shout out to Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. That's another name you gotta put into YouTube, Amanda McKnight. She is a host of many things, from comic books, video games, and all things nerdy. Another big thanks to the wonderful Jenny Potter, the legendary Devin McBride, Ryan frickin' Campbell, my favorite soul singer, Saber, and last but not least, Francis Coffer, AKA my mom. If you want to shout out at the end of these episodes and get them all early, raw, and uncut right when I'm done the Zoom call. No edits. I just post them. You can go to patreon.com slash the creative imbalance. Forever have my thanks. And also, you can go to bed at night just knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw, uncut, independent media. And nobody can take that away from you. You hear me? But with that being said, we got so many recorded episodes. What is this one like? 196? Episode 196? We have recorded 201 episodes. Yes, I have passed my episode 200. And episode 200 is a special one. If you're listening to this one because you like metal, you're going to love that one. Got some absolute legends, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But uh, thank you all for joining me on this journey. Whether you're a long timer or a new one, please give me a subscribe on the YouTubes or the Spotify's or wherever you're listening to this. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you. And I'll catch you next time. Peace!